Hi, everyone. I'm Tasha Keeney, Director of Investment Analysis and Institutional Strategies at ARC. And today I'm going to talk to you about Autonomous Ride Hail. This is from our Big Ideas 2023 deck. Please check out all the sections. Before I get started, there are risks in investing and innovation. Um, among them, regulatory hurdles, which are applicable here. Know that um, you know 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 these risks as investors, and Arc also does take into account these risks as we assess market opportunities. Let's get into it. Autonomous ride hail. Today, autonomous ride hail services are already available across about 15 cities internationally, whether those be full blown um, commercial opportunities or uh, currently testing with a, a specific group of individuals or employees. Uh, but the point is, autonomous cars are on the roads today. We think that autonomous technology should reduce the cost of mobility to about 12% of the average cost of human driven ride hail today. And ultimately, we think that autonomous ride hail platforms could, could scale to $14 trillion in enterprise value off of $4 trillion in revenue over the next five years. And why is autonomous technology innovative to begin with? Well, we've estimated that the price per mile that you could profitably charge a consumer for an autonomous taxi or ride hail service could be as little as 25 cents per mile. And this is going to be what what causes um, widespread adoption and what drives demand for these services. We do expect autonomous technology will be much safer than human driven cars, roughly 80% safer if you look at some of our prior research, but ultimately demand will be driven by price. And why does price matter? Well, if you look back over the past hundred years, the cost of personally owned travel really hasn't changed since the 1930s. It's been around 70 cents per mile um, for all of that time, but it's changing now. We expect, again, the cost of an autonomous taxi could be as little as 25 cents per mile. That's less than half the cost of driving a personal car. It's a lot less expensive than today's taxis. And this is what's going to make, what's going to open up the ride hill market to many people that do not have access to inexpensive point to point travel options today. So I said that prices could be as little as 25 cents, but actually, we think, especially in the early days of the market, there should be support for higher price points. So ride hail today in Western markets or in higher cost countries comes in at around two to four dollars per mile. So we see some amount of price support there, about thirty four billion dollars of addressable market. Um, we've done some analysis on how consumers value their time, uh, specifically for work and non-related work and, and non-work related miles. And we think there should be um, uh, one to three trillion dollars worth of demand at the one dollar to sixty cent price point. Um, there'll be an additional long tail uh, priced roughly equivalent to where we see ride hill options today in countries like China, where it's already relatively inexpensive at around 50 cents per mile. And then ultimately, the magic happens at the 25 cents per mile price point. This is where you bring those people into the market that do not are not necessarily in the ride hail uh, universe today, that all of a sudden get access to very inexpensive, very convenient travel that's an additional $5 trillion of addressable opportunity. Um, so the point here is uh, this is a very big market potential, much bigger than what we see in Ride Hill today. And as I said in the beginning, autonomous taxis are already on the road. So here in the US, Waymo and Cruise have already launched commercial services. There are customers from the general public that are in these cars, and there's no one behind the wheel of the car. It's a fully autonomous vehicle. Um, Baidu has also committed to launching any day now in China. Um, they're already testing in over 10 Chinese cities. Um, Pony AI uh, plans to launch in the next year or so. Um, the midpoint of our Tesla analysis would su suggest a 2024 um, launch time. And then finally, X Xpeng um, coming later between, uh, say, 2025, 2026. So while we have some players that have already commercially launched. The question is, when and how will this technology scale? Well, we go back to what we've learned from studying 
artificial intelligence broadly. And what we believe is that the more data that you have, the better your system should be. We've learned that with um, you know past uh, large models that we've seen cause these major breakthroughs in other areas of AI. And so ultimately, companies that have vehicles on the road today collecting data at scale have a great advantage. So I'll point out that while Tesla has not launched, it has almost 3 million cars on the road collecting information today, acting like little R&D centers, collecting corner cases to then feed back to the um, autonomous neural net training system uh, that helps the car improve. Um, that is much larger than um, that. That fleet is much larger than the fleet that we see at competitors. You know that might number in the hundreds or at most a thousand. And then finally, in China, Xpeng is also using customer cars to collect information. While they will not necessarily be the cars that are running in the robo taxi service, they're still able to collect information today. So they have hundreds of thousands on the road today. Um, we think that data will provide a significant competitive advantage here. And it, the effects of autonomous driving are going to be very widespread across a number of industries. The first is um, we expect oil demand could decline by 30% by 2030. This is thanks to both autonomous and electric platforms. So we believe that every autonomous vehicle will be electric. Um, just based on our EV forecast alone, we'd already expect a decline in oil demand autonomous technology will accelerate that because these cars will be much will have a much higher utilization rate than today's personally owned cars. Personally owned cars are used less than 5% of the day today. A taxi gets a, a, a very well utilized taxi gets a 30% utilization rate. We think autonomous taxis could have even a higher utilization rate, say 50%. That means that even more miles are going to travel over electric platforms if this takes off. And ultimately, oil demand could decline by 30 million barrels per day uh, by 2035. Um, and that is, uh, of course, a lot lower than the consensus expectation for oil demand. We also estimate that auto sales might have peaked, at least for the short term, in 2017. So. We've been producing our Big Ideas report for a number of years now. And back in 2017, we estimated that overall auto sales could uh, be, be less than expectations by about 24 million units by 2025. So actually, since we made that prediction, auto sales have declined even more than we had initially predicted. But of course, that's because of COVID and the supply chain crisis that we've seen over the past few years. Going forward, we still expect there to be a shortfall relative to expectations in the next five to 10 years. We're now estimating there will be a 29 million unit gap relative to consensus by 2027. And this again is because um, you can imagine that a two car household becomes a one car household, a one car household moves to zero cars as autonomous taxis begin to dominate urban transit, which is where most miles happen today. It's roughly two thirds of miles that happen in urban centers. This is where autonomous taxis will really take hold and that'll incrementally affect uh, the, the marginal buyer of an automobile. Um, longer term, you know, auto sales could increase again as, um, as you know, over the coming decades, autonomous travel gets even more popular. But of course, those will be autonomous cars. They won't be tr uh, today's uh, traditional personally owned vehicles. And ultimately, we think autonomous taxis could eliminate about 60% of short haul flights. Um, we've done this analysis across of our full price range for our per mile estimates for robo taxis, what the prices that consumers will pay per mile. And ultimately, that 60% of flights is worth about $100 billion in revenue, or about 20% of airline revenues in total. So this could be a pretty significant hit to the airline industry. Um, so, and, and ultimately, if you look at just price alone, excluding time, at 25 cents per mile, robotaxis are actually more cost effective than most short haul journeys. Um, and when you include price, um, when, sorry, when you include time, um, the the trade-off of cost and time will be even more dramatic for group travel. 
So if you're traveling with a family, let's say you have a dog and a baby, uh, you might not want to take a car, drive to the airport, go through security, get out of the plane, uh, take your car on the other end. There'll be a much more seamless op option to take an autonomous taxi, even if it takes you longer to get there. Um, so the graph here that you're seeing is our 25 cents per mile analysis at um, various uh, short haul flight options. And ultimately, you know, the bottom half here is what we're looking at for um, flights that we think could go to robo taxis that currently exist on short haul planes. So it might take slightly longer, but we still think that um, in some of those cases that an autonomous taxi will be a more attractive option because it's that seamless point to point option. And ultimately, we think autonomous taxis could generate about $4 trillion in revenue by 2027. Um, we think that these platforms will be a highly cash flow positive. Um, they'll have software like margins. Um, it'll be a recurring revenue stream to the platform provider, which we expect to be the company that um, develops and operates uh, the autonomous technology stack that actually makes the car drive itself. Um, so these companies that operate the robo taxi services are really the ones that we think will get the lion's share of the economics. And you can see that on the next slide. So, um, you know, we expect, again, $14 trillion in enterprise value attributable to autonomous platform providers. Um, the other two pieces of the market that we observed, well, first of all, I'll note that um, this may not be the ride hill companies and uh, all of the companies that we see working on autonomous transport today. We do expect there to be further consolidation in this industry. It'll be a uh, winner takes most market by our estimates in select geographies. Um, and not every company is going to be successful in this transition. Not every automaker is going to be successful in this transition. So if you look at the enterprise value attributable to automakers as of uh, the beginning of this year was about $2.7 trillion. We think that autonomous electric auto manufacturers could be worth about $1.9 trillion in enterprise value in the next five years. Um, not every automaker will be successful in electric and even fewer will be successful in autonomy. And the ones that aren't will actually have to partner with technology providers. Um, and they might be able to get a sliver of the economics on, on robo taxi and of course get the car sale. Lastly, um, the owners and uh, the, the maintenance providers. Um, these could be companies that house and maintain the autonomous cars. Uh, you might consider car rental companies today that are mostly renting out gas powered cars. Their business model is threatened by this transition. Um, it might be in their best interest to transition into being an autonomous fleet owner. Um, they, the, we think that the autonomous platform providers will have the assets held on a third party company balance sheet over time. Um, and of course, these companies can help um, maintain the vehicles and take care of them over time as well. Um, so that's about $300 billion in enterprise value. For more research, visit arc-invest.com. Thanks for sharing this with me today.